it's time to read another story for our Hanukkah nights in 2019. I'm keeping the lighting low so those of you who are turning this on right before bedtime don't have to worry about a glare that can keep you up at night while you look at the screen and read along with me or just follow the pictures while I read this Hanukkah book to you. It's called One Candle by Eve Bunting, illustrated by K. Wendy Pop. Let's start. As you can see in the picture, this is the first night of Hanukkah. This is the shamus, or the helper candle, and this is the first night. You go from left to right on your Hanukkah, which is a special menorah only for Hanukkah, and this is the first night you would light one candle, and you go each lighting a different one until you get to the end. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight nights of Hanukkah. There's our dreidel and gelt. Gelt is money, but we usually use candy or chocolate coins. I say this because not everybody knows about Hanukkah. But it's fun to learn and to read. Let's begin. This Hanukkah is like every other one. Our house is filled with food and family and delicious cooking smells. Our great aunt Rose is here. She's grandma's sister. There's mom and dad, we three kids, and my uncle and his family. When grandma and grandpa arrived at our house, Dad gets to hug them first. Grandma brings the potato. When I was little, I thought it was to eat. Or to grate for the latkes that mom makes. But it isn't. Grandma puts the big brown potato on the plate in the middle of the table. And great aunt Rose leans across to touch it with a trembling finger. Her glasses are misted over. Poor great aunt Rose, my cousin Nancy whispers. She's crying again this year. You cry too if you were her, my big sister Ruth says. After sunset, we light one candle in the menorah with the shamash for the first night of Hanukkah, say special prayers, and take our places at the table. Dad piles our plates with sliced brisket and gravy. Mmm. Mom passes the latkes and the dishes mounded high with applesauce. I think that's the best way to eat latkes. The candles in the menorah burn low and the shadows tremble on the ceiling. The table buzzes with conversation. I love all our holidays when we're together like this, but maybe I love Hanukkah most of all. After we've eaten, Mom looks at Grandma. I think it's time, Mama. Grandma nods. Then Dad goes in the kitchen and brings back the things Grandma will need. Grandma takes the small knife and begins to hollow the potato. There she is. We are all very quiet. Even my cousin, Baby Sam, who has been fussing all through dinner, trying to pull off his bib. We watch as Grandma piles the small pieces of scooped out potato onto her plate. Tell us now about the bad time, Mama. Mom says. Her voice is so soft and loving. 
We lean forward. We know this story by heart, but we want to hear it again. To us, this story is Hanukkah. Grandma takes Great Aunt Rose's hand. Well, it happened when we were young. We were separated from our families and put into a camp. It was called Wukenwald. That was in Germany. There was a war on at the time, and the Germans didn't like the Jews. Why? My little sister Bitsy asks. And I remember how one by one we'd all ask that question. Baby Sam will probably ask it next. Grandma shrugs, and Grandpa says, The Germans didn't like a lot of people. It wasn't only the Jews. Grandpa wasn't in a camp. He met Grandma afterward, when she came to America. The camp was like the worst prison you could imagine, Grandma says. We were always hungry, always cold. There were seven women in our barracks, but at least Rose and I were together. Great Aunt Rose begins to whisper the names of the other women, the way you'd say a prayer. Rose was 13. I was 12, Grandma says. Uncle Leon shivers. Just Ruth's age. We look at my sister Ruth, and then at Grandma, trying to imagine... The older women worked in the fields, Grandma continues. Rose and I worked in the kitchens. We were small and thin. It's a marvel they even kept us. We helped cook for the officers. Grandma leans back in her chair and closes her eyes. Her chin quivers. All that wonderful food, none of it for us. I look around the table. I am full from Mama's delicious cooking, and there are still leftovers. I can't imagine going hungry. There's the challah bread, too. Yum. Hanukkah was coming, Grandma says. We knew because we kept the dates on a hidden piece of paper. Working there in the kitchen, I had an idea. Little by little, I smuggled things out. A blob of margarine and a scrap of paper, small enough to hide in my hand. Two matches. And on the day before Hanukkah, a potato. Not as big as this one. Not as big a one as this, excuse me. I brought it out under my skirt. Grandma puts her hand over her heart. Oh, I was so frightened. I thought my chest would burst with fear. The guard at the door looked at me suspiciously. Aunt Rose walked beside me. She gave me courage. Great Aunt Rose shakes her head. I had no courage to give you, Lily. You held me up, Grandma says. What would they have done if they'd caught you, Ruth asks. Great Aunt Rose gives a little moan. <laughs> there, there. We were all right, Grandma says. She squeezes her sister's hand. When we got back to the barracks, the women couldn't believe what I'd done. A potato. Heaven. Were we going to eat it right away? No. That wasn't why I took the risk. Grandma looks around the table at each of us. We know why she took the risk. She's hollowing it out. They used to have to wear these stars in Germany. It was a star of David. They would have to wear it on their shirt, and it says Jude, which in German means Jew. I hollowed out part of that potato the way I did this one. 
Grandma touches the potato and stares down at it. We ate the pieces I'd saved. Nancy interrupts. Raw? Yuck. Grandma smiles and nods her head. Delicious. Better than any candy. Then we put the margarine I'd stolen into the potato, pulled a thread from Rose's skirt to make a wick, and lit the flame. She pauses. We had one candle for Hanukkah. That Hanukkah candle lifted us, Grandma says, and there are tears in her eyes. It lifted us to the stars. Bitsy screws up her face. How could it lift you, Grandma? In our minds, sweetheart. In our hearts. Now we watch as Grandma pours oil into the potato and lights the wick I've made from twisted threads. We have a flame. We have a candle. Grandma wipes away her tears and we all stand up. May I take it? I ask. Yes, Grandma says. I set the candle on the windowsill, and it glows back on itself in the dark glass. We go outside. Dad has switched off the house lights, and the Hanukkah candle has burned itself away. On the windowsill is this one steady flame. My sister Ruth whispers close to my ear. Why do you think Grandma wants to do this every year? I shrug my shoulders because I don't know for sure. But I think it has to do with being strong in the bad time and remembering it in the good time. And for the women in Grandma's barracks and the others who didn't live to come out. Grandpa passes the little glasses of sweet wine to the grown-ups and the the grape juice to us. We raise the glasses toward the flame. L'chaim, Grandma says, to life. To life, we chant. And in that moment, we are lifted to the stars. end I hope you all liked that book it may not be a silly happy little kids book with funny images like some of the others that we like to read but I do believe that it is a heartfelt and sweet inspiring book that inspires us to remember not only the Holocaust, but that Hanukkah is more than just an empty holiday that people celebrate out of the obligation from families due to a tradition that many have long forgotten. We celebrate Hanukkah in my family because it is more than an ethnic holiday. We believe that it celebrates the miracle of God. And if you actually read the history of Hanukkah, that is what it celebrates and is equally important and relevant today and always for both Jews and Christians everywhere. The history talks about the Maccabees, and the rebuilding of the temple when it was destroyed and the candle, well, the oil that burned for eight days when it should have only burned for one. So I believe this time of year and each year at this time, reviewing the history and reliving 
the love and graciousness that God our Father shows us is important. But even if you don't observe this holiday, as many don't, I realize, I think it's a, a, a good time of year to reflect and to learn about other cultures and other things, other holidays and occasions that different people celebrate. So, hopefully, no matter what holiday you celebrate, you've enjoyed this story. Have a good second night of Hanukkah. May the peace of God our Father be with you and keep you. Sweet dreams. Have a great day tomorrow. Good night.